Okay, for some reason, not knowing anything about the show, <laughs> uh-huh. I heard Ikebukuro Westgate Park. For some reason, I got eight, I got eight mile vibes, and I thought I was about rappers. I, I don't know why. <laughs> <Mile vibes. laughs> David, stay muted. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that's what I thought about the show because I had no fucking clue. Because I, I, for some reason, like. Because Koo kept wanting, like, like he kept, he's like, oh, he kept wanting wars, he kept wanting wars. I was like, why? I was like, aren't these guys like musicians? What? What was Gay Wars? Was it Eight Mile? No, man. I I never saw Eight Mile or Eight Mile, but for some reason, I got the vibes of it. You know, I just thought of you know. Which, I, uh, I don't know. Which by the way, there, there is a, there is like anime this season. Hip Hip Knock. What is Hypnosis Mike? Which is like. Yeah, um, rap yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I remember David saying something about that. I just assumed it was West Kid. <laughs> so I don't know, dude. <sighs> Fucking good. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Isekai Podcast, week 8 of the fall 2020 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing a week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shred. Hi, guys. Next up, we have Ku. Hello. And finally, we have Taylor. Hello. All right. And um, so just quick uh, round of uh, anime news. I guess this was announced earlier, but I guess we skipped it. But uh, Sword Art Progressive was just announced to be a movie instead of a TV, sh- TV series. So um, I think they said it's only the first arc. So I'm assuming we'll either get more trilogies or maybe they'll do a TV adaptation of that. We'll see. Maybe there's a chance. Mm-hmm. I and don't care what- I, yeah, I, don't, I don't care the way. That's why I guess I ignored it the first time. But Strand that yeah, wasn't. We have Long enough. Horizon. I think it's no, it's noteworthy. You know, we're uh, we're giant fans of Sword Art, so we might as well mention it. Yes, yes, we are such giant fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, sure. though, if it comes if it comes to theaters here in like a year, I'll probably go see it. Just like we have. I'm gonna saw, still see it. Just like how we saw Ordinal Scale. Dude, Ordinal Scale again was better than the actual show, or the, the, the series. Oh, wait, wait, actually, wait, no, Ordinal Scale is actually uh Canon, wasn't it? I guess. Supposedly. Because I think the, so. The people in the movie came in with <laughs> the colonization, so I guess it must unless, be. Unless that's part uh unless that's part was it like um uh was it non canon? They just kinda just toss it in there. I don't know. Just to make it look like it. That's right. Anyway. Every, everything sort of is canon. Let's just say that. Sure, sure. Anyway, I'll I'll stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah, so So that's sort of uh well, I was to say like um I'm not surprised that like reading more trends of movies because I mean they're already getting popular already and now Demon Slayer like being like it's pretty much gonna be like the top movie, top Japanese movie whatever. It already made a lot of money, so I'm not that surprised they're gonna try to get more movie because you get way more money than that than just TV series. Right. So we'll see. Because um, but they were also so because they're still waiting for like the the fake Grand Over movies too. I think that was supposed to come out soon. Yeah, I don't care about that. <laughs> Yeah, is it wasn't it supposed to come in theaters like in I don't December? I, don't, I remember seeing I, it. I felt like it was supposed to come out yeah like by twenty twenty in, in Japan. We'll we'll see, but I mean Oh that yeah. fates I thought you were talking about Heaven's Feel. Okay. Oh, I no, 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 about... Heaven's Feel is still yeah. coming or it, it already yeah. came here in theaters. Oh did it? Oh. <laughs> or no, I think it comes out next week in theaters here. So Oh so okay, so it's this month. So, I, I completely forgot. Yeah. yeah, they're still allowed to show it. I don't know. We'll see. Fucking okay. Anaplex. Based to Heaven's COVID. Yes. F- fucking Anaplex. <laughs> That's why we have to, we'll see if like Demon Service comes out in the winter here. So I hope. So I, we'll, well, it, we will yeah. see. So that's just it for our anime news quick. Um, we're going to move on to Jutsu Kaisen. Um, your panda uh, shut up for a little bit. Strider really didn't get much, much air time. Dude, like the most, the one, the one moment I thought of like Jujutsu Kaisen where I was just like, oh damn, was when that guy actually spoke, you know, legitimate words and not like just sushi, salmon. Wait, I don't remember that part. He actually said it. Yeah, no, well, he said like, uh, like, was it stop moving or, uh, mm-hmm. Ku, do you remember or Taylor? Do you guys remember what he said? Part? Okay. Yeah. I was barely yeah. paying attention then. Oh, basically, oh say stop moving. So yeah. I think his power is that whatever his words, like whatever he says, comes to fruition. Mm. That's, that's why he just keeps that's saying. That's OP. Like, yeah. That's yeah. OP as fuck. Makes sense. Yeah. But that was like my favorite kind of like, oh shit moment. Like the panda just jumped in and punched him. I'm like, come on. You gotta represent better. 
It's a, it's a panda. What what did you expect? I do I don't know. Dude, I mean, Surprise me. He's always has You're so, a panda. He always has jujitsu powers. He got short off eventually. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, so I mean, nothing really much happened besides introducing more of the characters. Uh, that that twin, it's like total waifu bait for Ku. So, wait, oh, right. <laughs> and then <laughs> I guess decent comedy there with the, the the big guy asking, "What's your taste in women?" Yeah, it was kind of like out of uh, out of nowhere. And we gotta watch. We, we watched our mo- uh, our boy was it Mob's uh, brother get beat down again. <laughs> And every time though, it seems like he's just about to do something, and then people like step in. And I keep thinking like, damn, like I just feel like this guy's just gonna just blow shit up whenever he actually like goes off. But mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm assuming though they're kind of already do. I think they're already doing kind of like foreshadowing in a sense where he's gonna probably face off against like the hype that like giant, uh, dude, the women, the the guy he he could just got beat down by. Yeah, I assume oh, he's gonna yeah. run it run into him in the in the. I think his name is like. Toto I'm just gonna call it tournament. <laughs> Toto? I think his name's yeah, Toto. Or it's like his last name. I don't remember his first name. I don't know, man. I, I don't remember Toto. I feel like I would have laughed if I heard that. Uh, it's not funny. <laughs> just the fact that his character itself just stands out so much. It's, yeah. It, like, Toto. It, it is Toto. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God, David. How the hell did you get that? And he's voiced by um, a white dude, actually. How did I not like laugh at this? Like, What's the funny, <laughs> what? what's the funny about Toto? Like, Toto? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't immediately think of uh, it's a yellow brick road one. Oh, Didn't she have a dot? Never mind. Wizard of Oz? <laughs> yeah, Wizard of Oz. I think of Toto and I think of that dog. Huh. And I've never even seen Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so, you know, that's where my mind okay, goes. Well, it's different names, so I don't know why. Oh, Whatever. well, my bad. Whatever. It's, it's, it's like Toto, isn't it? What? Yeah. It's sure. Toto, man. Yeah, it's Toto. Sure. Yeah. The guy's name is Toto. So, like, oh, Toto. Not... Yeah. Man, I hear him thinking Toto. Okay. Yeah, get it right. <laughs> so, yeah. that's why I didn't laugh. <laughs> Moving okay. on. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> got nothing really happened, so I don't have much to say this episode. Yeah, it, it just kind of felt like just like one of those weird kind of like awkward like ego, like a fight that they just kind of threw in just for like foreshadowing in a sense. Like it was really, my, it was really my, just yeah, introduce the characters and I guess some developments, but yeah, like, like grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, like still like my favorite besides like the guy like where like the oh shit moment where he was like actually speaking words was uh the, the part that I laughed at like probably the most was when. That chick basically is like holding her down a choke call and she's like, Give me your outfit. <laughs> That's like the only thing she really gave a shit about. She I mean she just got shot up, but that apparently didn't matter. She still wanted the outfit. For me, I thought the absolute best part of the episode was when Kasumi was um fangirling. Oh, that part was pretty <laughs> funny too. Yeah. Yeah, was fangirling and uh I was like, Oh yes, I finally found my character represented in an anime. <laughs> that would definitely be me in this one. <laughs> Oh god, she's a useless bodyguard to fangirls. <laughs> we don't know if she's useless yet. I mean, probably not because she's a bodyguard at that one. Yeah, guy. If, she's, if she's basically a bodyguard to like the OP old man. I mean, come on, you gotta be, you gotta be something, right? Uh, yeah. You would hope so, unless she just got it because you know she knew him or something, or uh, he well, knew her least, or something like that. At least as of right now, we know that she has very good taste. So, and she's got a cute haircut, but that was pretty much like the only. That was the only thing that really stood out to me. I didn't like this episode very much. The fight oh, really? Dumb. Yeah, that was really it. I mean... I... Oh, man, I was vibing with that Toto guy. <laughs> <laughs> laughing wow, the whole time. Share, you share his taste, too, I'm assuming? Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I wanna. I like them tall girls with a big butt. And then when he heard uh, Fushi Girls' taste, he was like, man, I'm so sad. You're so boring, bro. <laughs> I don't know why I have to cry over that. That was weird for me. Like, you care yeah, that like much that... about other people's taste in women that you have to cry over it? Well, because I guess he was looking for a fellow brother in arms, I guess. And then, That's your problem, you know... man. Don't push it on other people. Right, right. He, he's a really big fanatic, right? He's really into this kind of thing. And then he even got tickets to do the an hands- idol meeting. Yeah, the handshake Fuck. event. Yeah. So <laughs> Japan, this man's like, friend. Get used to it. Yeah, I know. But, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just felt like this. Like I mean, it, like the episode was like was fun, but like not much happened. The only thing that happened is at the end with uh the three the three guys who died in the theater. Oh and then, god, yeah, that's right. And then uh the other, I don't remember his name, but the other person, the villain, and then that one kid just Brandon just starts talking to him. So he's either dead or he's got to join like their side. So that's no, like, he's joining him for sure. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. That that would be my guess. Yeah. 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 I think basically this whole episode was just a foreshadowing or setup for the next yeah. arc because everything was foreshadowed. Like the opponent that Fushi Girl is going to face next, uh, basically like what's 
they even said one month later so yeah uh like how um the mc how strong he's gotten and then they're even setting yeah. up like new villains as well so so you guys just next arc is so good i'm so excited for next week oh i was gonna say like if they're at a time skip <laughs> to a month like we gotta be a tournament soon so yep 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 I mean, starting that's all, soon. i'm also i'm glad to, I'm, that's why i'm so glad that it's 24 episodes because like yeah this pacing would yeah. not be good for a 12 episode or, or no episode especially season. yeah especially i mean like i have no like i'm, I'm not against it at all like if they just say like one month later and they just skip that time and they kind of just show you like flashbacks like during like whatever like fight that they're in i'm perfectly fine with that it's uh i think i would actually prefer that over um if they were just instead of just like kind of like showing that like the progression during it like oh you know but instead of just skipping the month where they just kind of show like you know them training or improving but i, I have a uh, was it there's there's two questions though i had for basically like with the well, that, like when are those like three dudes that died terribly in a movie theater one why was it just three dudes in a movie theater and another one why was that guy there like like of all places that like, he could have gone to like basically like to maybe possibly kill people why go to like a random movie theater maybe, where there's just three dudes maybe they were like just skipping school on like a monday monday afternoon and it's just only them in theater maybe it was like a small town i don't know uh-huh i don't know okay. yeah. i don't really, I didn't really well, care that much about why it was okay. just those three. Well, probably We'll probably find out next episode when, uh, what was it, Itadori goes in with that one guy. So. Maybe it was just like a really, really like niche movie that no one else heard about, and they're the only ones bought tickets for that time slot. I don't know, Stren. I don't think it's that okay. important. All right. All right. What was the other maybe, question? Maybe, maybe he killed them because they were, uh, they, was it they were pirating the movie? It's like, at, hey, at, at the theater? Knock it off. Push the heads. At the yes. theater? Okay. Hey, who knows? <laughs> All right. What's the other question, yeah. Stren? Like, why would that guy, why would the zombie or the stitched up dude be there? I mean, you know, maybe, a reason? maybe he likes movies too, bro. What? Like, maybe he likes movies. I mean, maybe he was there by himself and then those three people pissed him off and then he killed them. Yeah, maybe. But does that really matter? All right, fine. Yeah, just bring it, it out, man. Okay. okay. I'm, trying to make, I'm trying to make this episode, you know, more like, a, you know, interesting. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, man. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks for the effort. Sure, okay. We didn't need that. We had total. All right. That's all we needed. Fair, fair enough. I got nothing else. <laughs> the only thing I'll say too is like, yeah, I, I feel like in general, like the way Shonen Jump shows the pacing for the pacing, I feel like yeah, it sounds like twenty four episodes is like, is like a minimum to get started. So yeah, I, I, I'm fine with the pacing so far. No even issues. Actually, no. I, yeah. Even though I guess Promise Neverland was twelve episodes, so I guess that's exception. I would assume Promise Neverland was done better though. Yeah. Considering everybody loves that show. Um, I don't know if it was. Like, at, like better in what way? Like, I feel like it's just going to be like, a more condensed story. Like, it's not a shonen, or yeah, it's not a shonen. It's not long running. So I feel like, yeah. So I feel like they're just too different to compare. Well, I mean, condensed is fine, but like, was the pace like was the pacing of the condensed done well? I guess. Yeah, it was. It fit that okay. the oh, yeah. thirteen episode mm-hmm. like Perfect. format. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but I guess nothing really. Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. So I guess we can move on. So that's it for Jujutsu Kaisen, and next is Haikyuu. Oh boy! Pass it on, uh, you guys. So it's it's starting <laughs> to pick up, uh, right? I don't know, man. Right, guys? It's it's starting to get better, right? <laughs> when okay, I, for, first... I forgot what the episode was about an hour after watching it, <laughs> so it had to remind me. So that was my opinion of this week's episode. I was like. When Nishinoya started speaking, I was like, oh, damn, this is the episode. This is the hype episode for Nishinoya. And it was done so poorly. Because, uh, like, one, and yeah. it, like I just kept thinking, like, Nishinoya's, like, moment, like, if it was even amped up to maybe be even, like, what, to, like, uh, you know, Ryu's was, I thought, like, I thought, like, you know, damn, maybe we can get, like, kind of, like, those, those, uh, like, was it the, those feels or the goosebumps or something? It yeah. got none of that. It got just choppy-ass animation again. Some random dude that comes in fails his point. And then just yells like uh, Nishinoya back into the game, and then they just kind of win the point like normally. And they, they 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 it was just like that sh- the terrible animation where they all rush the court, and it just looks bad. And I just and I was just like, oh god, that was. And I just kept thinking like, if this happened in the third season, this how much better this would have looked or could have looked, or or, or it could have just been done better too. I mean, I, was just, oh. I, think, I think the animation actually picked up from the Get last. Get out of here. No, no. Last- no, so, I, I I agree with Kuo. Oh, last episode was terrible. Yeah, it, I mean, right, right. You, but what I'm saying is, is like, right. compared to the last couple episodes, the animation actually picked up. And uh, I would say the last episode, Nekomas, I thought were fine. 
I don't think there was that much. Well, th- but they didn't have to have like intense animation though. A lot it was a lot of talking. No, but basically, like after Nekoma, they went back to the Karasuno, uh, like match. Yeah. Yep. Like animation was just it just completely dropped. Oh yeah, quality, yeah, right. Definitely. And then with this episode, it's starting to slowly pick it back up. But the thing that like bugged me the most as like a volleyball player, I really don't understand like how or why he was having difficulties picking up those uh, serves, uh, especially with it being overhead. Right? I know. I was thinking the same thing, and I'm not even a volleyball player. Uh, the only thing I kind of like, kind of that I picked up or I have a guess for is like he's so used to basically like the intense shots, and he's just used to basically like you know blocking them low, uh, or but, you know just like the normal thing where they're he's always just getting like they're, they're always just come flying at him, and where it's just I don't know if it's just sort of, sort of like aggressive shots, but then if I don't know if it's like the hesitation to just move forward and actually hit it up instead. I don't know. Well, the. It, the, the weird thing is his story didn't really check out either because basically his story was he was scared. Like we knew I was, he was, I was, laughing he was very though. scared. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, like I, I get that, you know, but what what part of his serves were scary when they're floaters, right? And then all he had to do was just take a step forward and then just receive them. Um and they didn't really like go into details as to why he was scared or why he was so fixated on like underhand receiving those serves. So yeah, this, this episode really didn't make sense to me, but mm-hmm. hopefully with the next episode or two, they'll kind of pick up on why. Like, even the story itself, I, I really don't get why we needed that backstory. When I was a child, I was scared, but now I'm okay. I was so disappointed that it was just like half an episode of Nishinoya, and they threw it the, they chose this episode to talk about the other fucking team. I was like, why? Like, just, if anything, save it to their own, like, their own, uh, like, their own episode. And then they give Nishinoya like his own episode because like we really know nothing about his backstory really, so I was like really hoping to get more instead of just kind of like a, a story where he basically his grandpa's just throwing him into shit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I they... thought was I thought was enjoyable, but I do definitely agree like it was just it was just executed poorly, mm. and I was really like hoping for more. But then again, there's only four episodes left of this uh, season, so yeah, yeah we'll see what we'll... happens. Um. So I don't, I don't know if you remember what I talked about last week, but I really feel like they're going to take all of part two to finish up this match. And then the last episode, it's going to be a setup towards their match with Nek- Nekoma, if, if they even win. Dude, I, there's, I there's a part of me, I was telling Taylor this, I, I, I kind of want Karasuno to lose, just to basically see people's reactions. Because, well, one, uh, Brian's definitely got to be here for that. <laughs> Yeah. And I just want to see what, like, just that whole kind of, a part of me wants to see that, but then definitely, like, I know like, I'm going to, like, even though, like, this, like, the season, even, like, the first part of the season has been just awful, I know they're going to make it, like, a tearjerker if that happens. Like, it's going to be brutal because it's, like, it's, because it's, like, it would be, like, the third, third year's final match. And yeah. then it's just, like, oh, my God, we're going to have to deal with that fucking number seven guy. We're, we're going to have to deal with him instead of, uh, who's the, the mom? What's his name? Oh, um, Sigawara? Yeah, the him. But he'll be gone. Like number seven will be taking his place. We're gonna basically see like all these just basic looking people for the you know like for the next year. I'm <laughs> basically, thinking. basically, oh, Stratton is so butt hurt about the animation. He just wants to burn it all down. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Because well, one like I even said like you know like this the last episode like if Krasno were to lose, I would I, like even though, like with the animation being as bad as it is, I would still probably I would probably still tear up pretty hardcore. If that cry over like the last episode because it's it's the third year's final game, and then oh, the whole sure. thing that I would cry then, too. Yeah, and then the whole thing that we have to deal with, you know, the like you know the next year then where they're where the new people come in, and then they're all the new people are just basic looking, and they just they're, like they're like, <laughs> and I how, like I, I mean, how two... to be fair, Daiichi is not exactly super unique looking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well that that's fine. Well he's basically I think that that also fits his style though because he's basically just like a solid <laughs> unit. You know, he's just a solid player. There's nothing really. He's basically like he's just dependable. And then, uh, but then these other people though, two of them just hit floater balls. That's all they fucking do. I was like, you you don't need two people to be doing this. You know, but, I, I don't know. You're you're right. I have no arguments for, about that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. The, the only thing that I kept thinking would be really awesome is like if they actually bring in like if they bring in somebody else that's like not like Hinata, but like the same kind of hype, like and not like his position, but somebody that's actually like. Some somebody you can actually like or get get excited about. I mean, actually, um, what? No, I mean because I'm I'm saying like with the new the new like you know the new couple people that came off the bench that all they do is yeah. hit floaters. Like there's yeah. nothing really kind of special about them. They're just hitting floaters. 
it's in the but then it's like you know when Kageyama came in, Hinata came in, they basically were just you know crazy unique players, mm-hmm. and they're just they're just you know they're like memorable, noticeable, different from the the rest of everybody else. Like I'm just hoping like you know maybe if like the next year goes in that they're gonna have to obviously bring in new players, especially right. with Krasno actually well, like um um doing you know getting into nationals you know actually improving and doing well that actually interest other people into joining that high school just because they want to be a part of the team. So they could they could easily go that route uh, as well if they wanted to. Do we know who's going to replace like Daiichi when he moves on? Is has any of that been? No, uh, I don't think I don't think they really have. It'll it'll probably be that one guy that subbed in for him. Yeah, I think so. The one that okay. looked like him. The other shaved head. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <'Cause> that's <laughs> yeah. what I was thinking. I was thinking they were like grooming him to take that role, and I wonder if like the guy that was in this episode, you know, light brown hair, See, um, another basic was... looking guy. <laughs> God. Um, but, I like. I wonder if like he'll what like what role he'll fill. Like he obviously he wouldn't fill one of the thirty years, but like I, you just no. give him a shot. Threaten. I mean, like they'll they'll yeah. they'll develop personality down the road. I just feel like this like there's the second like when they move to second year. I just feel like the team's gonna be so much of like more of like a like it's it's just gonna be such a downgrade from what they have now. <laughs> uh, like the team just. I don't think so. Because if you really think about it, right? They no, they're got... only losing three. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's fair. They're losing Daichi, the hairbun guy, and then uh, Asahi. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, forgetting God. these people's names because they just haven't been noticeable, or they they haven't been like the like they haven't really been like pointed out. I guess. Um, I don't know. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, I think. I think they'll be fine they're, again. They're. There also hasn't been nearly enough Yachi this season either. Like they spent all this time introducing her last season, and oh. she like she's had she's literally been in like two couple second scenes this whole time. She's gonna be in a much bigger role next year because uh, that other girl is the third year, isn't she? Yeah, so she's gonna yeah. be gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So her year will be next year. Okay, about something that might not even happen. This might just be the last season or last animation that they. Manga in general, so yeah, we'll I see. don't know. I'm 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 know. really I'm really confused, and you know, <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually kind of disappointed in a sense with the direction mm-hmm. they're taking this. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think it deserves so much more than what they're uh, doing with it right now. Yeah, and I was telling Stratton earlier that I went back on my anime list. I haven't been on Reddit yet to see any reactions there, but I was on my anime list and I read some of the reviews mm-hmm. and like up through like like last season like part one you know of the of, i guess part one of the season mm-hmm. uh, people were still like defending the animation and they were i mean really nobody like the couple people that had bad things to say about it were just shot down immediately whereas this season this this part of this season a lot of people are going on there and reviewing all sorts of stuff like the animation yeah nobody likes it but like there's also people talking about how like the direction and pacing of this season are pretty poor compared to the manga. And they've mentioned like a lot of these other things that I thought about too. Cause yeah, we, I mean, we all know the animation isn't great, but I, well, I don't know if I won't speak for certain on this, but I think that we could all <laughs> handle it if the rest of it was so good, but it just feels like a completely different show to me a lot of the time and whatever methods that they use to make me care about characters before, like on opposite teams, and, mm-hmm. and such it, it just isn't working anymore and i don't know why but a lot of other people have mentioned it too so i mean it's definitely like not doing well in their reviews which i thought was interesting because they weren't Join doing us. that <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, no, I, I don't know how to feel about it because like i don't want it to do so bad that we'll never be able to get another season but i don't want another season if it's just gonna be more of this you know yeah no i i totally get it and then like i'm i'm like i think i'm in the same boat as you um yeah. This is the only chance I'm going to be paying any attention to it, though. I can't. Well, I can't. I can't read this. Oh God. I mean, it, it's it's kind of like Sword Art, right? If if they're going to keep making more of these, I'm I'm just going to watch it just because. Mm-hmm. But uh, as as Taylor mentioned earlier, they kind of lost the uh, the appeal of the show. Like they don't. Um, I gotta say, it's just it's like animation doesn't really bother me as much. But yeah, definitely the pacing and then like the impact of the story. It's not drawing me in like season one, two, and three did, right? Yeah. Uh, so I totally get what what they're coming uh, where they're coming from, but I yeah I just don't see how they're gonna fix it. Honestly, it's kind of like the damage has been done already. <clears throat> Excuse me, the damage has been done already. So I I don't know how they're gonna salvage this. Honestly. Well, I I don't know. A couple and these are definitely rumors, at least from the level that I looked into it. 
um, there's rumors that because of staff, like staff being moved around and schedules being changed because of co- everything to do with COVID, right. like this season might have just, you know, just gotten the short end of the stick for that. Because like, this is a... This is still the same studio that's doing like Attack on Titan this winter, right? No, this is not. Uh, this is production ID. Right, it's different. Yeah, and like production ID is a huge. It's a huge like, uh, company slash corporation. So there's lots of different. There, there's a. It's an umbrella of a bunch of different studios. Mm. And well, anyway, they were never they were were never involved in um Attack on Titan. That was with studios. This is different production IG studio. Huh. I'm getting my studios mixed up. But yeah, it was just rumors that I read online about how like things might have been moved around and it might change for next season. But I really don't know. I'm thinking I'm actually going to do kind of a deep dive on it and see if I can find out like if there's a reason for why it's like this. I heard it's because um, of director change, but yeah. Or, it, it could yeah. be that, but yeah. I'm still blaming either COVID or just budget issues. Uh, those, I mean, those are the big ones. I remember though, the, the season was already coming out before COVID though. Or the, the first, I guess, half of the season was supposed to be coming out before COVID, and it was still looking like trash. Okay, well, I'll just blame 2020 then. 2020 just sucks, dude. Yeah, that's, that's fair, too. Yeah. Um, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got. All right. I yeah. think I feel like we talked too much already about this. <laughs> all right, yeah. So, well, I said before I, that, that great note us about Haikyuu. So, we're going next to Higurashi. Then, oh my god so Higurashi <laughs> I told oh. you who was gonna have stuff to say I told you yeah. well, oh, I, I, man. so the first thing I want to say is that like I was kind of hoping that the clip I saw from the old series would be in here but it's not so but I understand because it, it would be later it would be later, later? on if it was okay. gonna happen okay yep. I guess it's not this arc then so we'll see guys Shion is dead she's dead I told you she was innocent she was a good girl <laughs> but she's dead <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh my this. god, dude. I need to say this before okay. you continue on. Okay. This sure. is a severe departure from the original series. Like everything about it. Because I couldn't remember. I was trying to figure out like if I was remembering different because there's so many like repeating timelines. I can't always play certain scenes with each arc because it gets kind of mixed together. And so I was trying Animal. to figure out like I, I I looked up what happened in the old one and the exact series of events from this exact arc, and this is completely different. So I don't really know oh, okay. where we're going from here. Because, like, the last one with Reyna, like, basically uh, the same thing. Some slight changes that really could just be chalked up to, like, you know, a different director or something. But this is completely different, 100%, by the end with this episode. So, so it's kind of like Shion, Shion might have been innocent here, but... <laughs> uh-huh. But it's kind of like what you mentioned, like, during the first couple episodes, then. This is kind of getting the Final Fantasy Seven remake uh, yes. treat, right? So Yeah, it seems like... Oh, that's crazy. Well, it's okay. I like this version better because she's <laughs> not but now she's dead. I knew something bad happened to her. Oh my Everybody's god. Everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. They're all yeah. dead. <laughs> true, true. Except for Tanky. Oh. Dude, Rika got fucked up. She got killed and then put in the, the uh septic tank of the outhouse. Septic tank? I was like, because when when like when you saw like he she tried to open the door and then it was like locked. Like I knew like <laughs> she was in there, and then uh, Mion was just trying to get him to like get away from that. I wasn't so. Yeah, Wait, I, did Rena did Rena die in this arc? Sorry to interrupt no. you, David, but I can't remember. Don't, okay, nope, she should did be like not? okay. That's felt like okay. Yeah. I think everyone but Rena and Kate she died out of the okay. group. What were you gonna say, David? Um, what was I say? Well, the one dumb thing was when Keiji was like right in front of that that jail cell, and he just, just let sh- sh- Mion just push her in. <laughs> like, come on, this is so obvious. How you gotta just let that happen? And then like it was didn't matter because the hate the cage cell heart just broke easily. So that was really weird. <laughs> yeah, with his tiny little body. <laughs> yeah, was, like you actually like, broke like the weakest that like down. iron. Like must be some rusty iron in there, like two hundred year old <laughs> iron or something. But. No, you know what? Like, I was okay with that, but from the moment where he got pushed into the cell and to the moment where he, like, knocked himself out from trying to, like, just bang through the door, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, what the hell he was thinking. I don't know how he broke out of the, the jail cell in the first place, but, like, why was it that when he was trying to slam through the door, he was using his head? You know? <laughs> like, that makes no sense. Like, at first, I saw him bleeding. It was like, oh, shit, he must have, like done it so much or put so much force into it that he fucked up his shoulder or his arm but no like it's showing that he's having a head trauma now it's like you need to tell me that there's this this guy is going head first into this iron door like uh, that, that doesn't make how sense how do you open doors 
uh, <laughs> with my hands or if I'm going to charge, you know, use my my shoulders, right? Like with your side, not your head. Like what? So unoriginal. I mean, I would have survived, not had a concussion, you know, but uh, Wait, he not just me. He survived, but he should have died. Wait, he knows what he's doing. I feel like I feel like he should have died in both arcs, but uh, you know, plot armor. So it's just really weird, dead. like because like I mean, of course that that fucking doll, like like I feel like he called it cool, like just changed everything. But it's it's really weird how like yeah, everything that Reina uh, Rika does, it's like it's it, it just ends up killing her in the end, and then lets uh, KG live. So I wonder if she's like if she's basically just, it's like she's remembering everything in the route and she just keeps resetting and then she's just basically trying to do it over and over until she gathers all the info. Kind of like, um, like, like was that one game? What? My argument to that is that he should have died in the first arc because there's no way in hell. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> My mother's like stabs. Yes, um, that, that too. <laughs> one more thing before that, you know, before we go on the whole thing, was sure. it plot armor or was it a head plate? That was the armor. Wait, what? What? Sorry, I missed it because we kept talking. Never mind. Continue. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I don't know. Just, I don't know. It's so, yeah. So, I'm assuming next arc, like, because, like, when she intervenes again, like, it's just gonna end up killing everyone. So, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Like, I, as of right now, I don't really see the, like, the purpose of her doing these things. I think because it's because she's. Based... I, I think she. I think it's because she keeps all the memories of the every time it happens, and then when it resets, she like just continues gathering. I wonder if she's like purposely doing this to just look at all the outcomes, and then she's going to figure out which outcomes the best and roll with that. Like um oh the game is uh was it nine 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 hours nine nine something nine doors and then um uh, was it zero's last escape like in that game. Like you, uh-huh. you, you, you go through routes and you die in a couple of them, but in order to get all the info, and then you have to constantly switch between timelines. So I imagine it's like it's like that game, like Rika is able to go through, jump through different timelines, and like just gather all the information to get to the, the actual true route. Uh, I suppose, but I guess, I guess Keiichi would be the one that's like the main key here. That's why she's giving him the option to go through all of this and kind of experience it. I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird that like she, it's, it's like she has the power, but it's so focused on Keiichi. So, hmm. but uh, I did like the the nice lore dump that we got. So we're we're, we're picking up more pieces of the story as we go. Um, it mm-hmm. looks like with every timeline or different route, it looks like the Sonozaki family is going to catch and kill the nurse and that photographer guy, and it looks like this is where they're going to end up. So we know. So we saw that mystery. And then we also saw, um, like, what's going on with, like, the family, like, that curse. So apparently mm-hmm. there's three great families, and then Rika's part of one, and then mm-hmm. Tosonozaki's is also one. I don't know who mm-hmm. the third family would be. I'm but... saying um, Sadoko. I think it might be her family. I don't remember her last name, but it sounds Do like you guys like... want? Do you guys want me to spoil it for you, or...? Oh, no, we'll just wait. We'll yeah. just wait. Okay. But it, it looks like with which with, with each route or which arc, uh, we are getting more info. And from the looks of it, everything is going to be somewhat consistent with what happens. Like all the main uh, key points, it looks like it's going to be consistent. So that's going to be a thing. But man, I don't know how this this is probably my most favorite arc, but my most depressing arc at the same time. <laughs> because I don't think Shion ever makes a comeback, right? I'm assuming she only appeared this route because. Keiichi gave me on the doll, and that's what caused her to appear, I guess. I uh, I would guess we're gonna see her again. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I don't know. I, I, like, unless they change literally everything, we're we're gonna see her again. Right. But because um, more... go ahead. Oh no, uh, I was just gonna say. I think the only reason why she showed herself was the fact that. You know, everyone treats Mion as like a guy or is afraid of her because she's the next head hole of the Sonozaki family. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the doll be given to her from Keiichi, you know, he was the first one to see her as a girl. And I guess like that, like by making her be all girly or act all like feminine, 
cause Shion to be interested and like finally showcase herself to the village or the KG. But if that never happens, I don't think she would care and she would just stay hidden like this whole time. I mean, I would just like phrase it as like she just happened to come out at that moment in that situation for that reason in this arc. But there could be other reasons for her to come out in other stories and other arcs. Like different different things that would happen that cause her to get involved. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think we we know for sure if she's going to constantly be there as well with the photographer and nurse at the at the shrine. During the yeah, that's one thing I'm not sure about either. I can't remember if that's the case or not. I feel like it's but, it's always like the photographer and the nurse like just getting yeah d disappearing no mm -hmm. no but we don't know if shion was there as well like oh. maybe she was there as well and she also disappeared i think this next arc is gonna open up more key plots to us or key points for us but, mm -hmm. but yeah no I'm, I'm i'm loving this show this show <laughs> <It's pretty laughs> awesome. yep this show is pretty great i like it i really like the fact like i was talking to certain earlier about how like every time, like in this episode, for example, after um, we see KG again, after he leaves the Sonozaki estate um, and the cop's name, I can never remember his name, <laughs> Oshi or something. Uh, he's Oli telling Oishi. him, oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's just like, like laughing about how he was investigating the whole thing and just like casually throwing out, oh, yeah, you know, we found so and so like down at the bottom of a well and. All these people are dead. He's kind of just like casually talking about it like it's no big deal. And I was talking mm -hmm. to Stratton and I said, I don't really remember this being so lackadaisical the first run through. Like people still reacted to these murders each time like it was a pretty, you know, grave incident. And I feel like that's not mm -hmm. as much the case here. But the thing with Higurashi is like for me, my normal instinct would be to write it off as like, well, the direction's not very good. Like they're just moving past it without really making it more realistic but the thing with higurashi is that that could be purposeful there might be a reason for why they're acting that way in the future and i'm really excited because i have no idea what's going to happen because they completely changed the ending of this story so it, it's, it's just really cool to kind of like put the pieces together and i think you're right i think we're going to get some pretty big um plot points starting with this next arc i believe yeah oh yeah Oh, and then uh, I still think Oishi is probably the worst detective alive. So maybe <laughs> yeah. that's why it's being played out like this. <sighs> I don't know. Oh, maybe you're right. Man. Yeah. Hey, man, Dude, how do you... Just, just a small, you can't just just tell a, a kid. small town officer just doesn't no, get involved in no, much things. Yeah, because right? he's always been a joke, to be fair. So. Yeah, but but no, no. Fuck that, all right? You don't, <laughs> the most you exciting don't thing ever just... to a small town, all right? You don't you don't just nonchalantly tell this like what twelve year old like this this young teenager kid that oh yeah 14, your friends died we found them in the well right right but same thing right? you don't just tell a kid who who woke up and got discharged from the hospital all this shit nonchalantly and then just expect him to just take it with a grain of salt you know because dude KJ was fucked up at the end because he didn't know if mm -hmm. if Mion was trying to save him or was the killer the whole time and yeah. the fact that you know he still feels like he's at fault for even like trespassing and violating the like the, the village um mm -hmm. like the, taboos the, i guess ritual storehouse right mm -hmm. so like he he's fucked regardless so with each arc so far he's basically left in a position where he is pretty much gone like his mental stage is gone so yeah like i said worst detective ever i feel kind of bad for kichi but i mean hopefully he comes out uh, better next arc or next time so hopefully Poor I'm kind of worried how more crazy Rico's gonna get because if you saw it in this arc, I don't know if they're gonna keep like amping it up every single time. So we will see. So who do you who do you think is gonna be the next main girl? We got. I think it's uh, I think it's Satoko, and then I think they're at, yep. and then I think the one after that it's gonna be Rika, and then maybe KT will be finally the oh, truth okay. in the fifth arc. We'll see. Yeah. Yep. I think David hit it on the head. Cause I don't, cause like those are the the main characters. I don't know who else they would focus on. unless it's a detective. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the detective. Or I guess I don't know. Maybe they focus on the nurse or the photographer. They they the only or other the teacher. Or the, I guess the teacher. Yeah. Uh, possibly, but I don't think the teachers had enough airtime to I be considered. I about her, but it's like it's like, that, like that besides like the kids, like yeah, the photographer and the nurse, and I guess detectives, like the only important characters in the show. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, no, that, that's all I got. Man, these next, that's, oh man, I just can't wait. It's so good. <laughs> Actually, I'm curious about Sadoko because yeah, we don't really know anything about her either. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Even though she was kind of creepy this episode because she was like, 
making these huge accusations against uh, against Keiichi when Rika disappeared. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I think that was more normal just because, you know, a girl's gone missing and then the last person you saw of her was Keiichi. So I think that was fairly normal. Oh, I don't know. It just, it seemed, I don't know. I thought it was just that was weird that she was so insistent that it was Keiichi, but. Hmm. To me, it, it seemed like it was trying to, like, allude to something that we don't know about yet. Like, I don't think that she was necessarily trying to, like, hard accuse him or anything. Mm-hmm. I think it's just supposed to show that there is some reason why she would be so worried about Rika. That's what I think. Right. But I yeah. don't know why it would be like pushed on KG. I have no idea. I know it's because uh, they were like Rika was lasting with KG when, you know, Rika well, had their, yeah. that tunnel shift. So besides that, that yeah. Yeah. But anyways, that's all I've got. Yeah. Mm. I will say I will miss this arc because I do like Mion a lot. I think she's probably, probably my favorite of the, the cast. Bro, fuck so. Mion, dude. What about Shion? Man, I'm all about Reyna. I love Reyna. She's the absolute so. best. <laughs> uh, whatever. He is a hopeless. Well, it's like... I don't know, I just Mia's put, my second favorite. I put more focus on, <laughs> on Mia just because of the story focus more on her it's in this arc. So Sounds like we have a love triangle, guys. <laughs> Me, more like wife mm, sure. I don't know what you're talking okay, about. Sure. Hey, whatever, man. I'll take that, too. Sure, sure. Okay, so I think I'm that's done. it for Higurashi. Um, and also, I keep writing, too, that 24 episodes, so... Even with how Stack Winner is, we still have to talk about this show. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. I'm okay with that. So. Winter will be fun times. Mm-hmm. And then we A lot get... of dark shows this winter. Yeah. And then we'll get to keep talking about resetting timelines all over again or ReZero. With the oh, machine. God. So. Oh, that's right. Do ReZero this? So Re- oh, man. Oh, my it's... God. Promise Neverland, ReZero, Attack on Titan, and Higurashi. Like, seriously. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be speaking so little next season. Good. <laughs> I don't need you. <laughs> Jeez! Oh damn! All right, it's getting kind of right. dark. So that's gonna be it for Hiroshi. Yeah. Speaking then of dark, we're gonna move on to Don Don Machi. Now it's your turn to talk, Stren. Oh god, we're we really we're we doing this one next. Wait, we haven't done Fire Force yet. We oh, that's right. We do. Well, you want to do Fire Force now? Yes, because Don okay. is way better to talk about. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll, do Fire Force, then. we'll do Fire Force. I'll say that um, this episode was better than the other ones, but it's still, still eh. Yep. We got the return of Dr. Giovanni, so at least there's that for Sasha, his favorite character. He always wanted to be a bug, and now he is. I mm-hmm. have no idea if he actually wanted to be a bug, but he is. And then, dude, I have no idea what they're doing with Tamaki. It's like, they try, it seems like every time they try to make her redeem herself, it's just, she's, she's just useless. She's there for fan service. Uh, I want to say she's useless, but uh, dude, she her... Had be, she, she had to, like, she couldn't do anything against, like, the Infernals and the two other... No, like, no, no. Like she was actually able to fend off the Infernals. It was the uh, the Evangelist that she couldn't fend off, which I think it's it's fine because it's given just, her position or her character, it's actually way more than I expected from her. It's just so. like it just puts her in a bad light because it just makes it seem like she has to always be saved. Like, bro, she's been put in a bad light ever since she got the uh, the the lucky lecher skill. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. so tired of that. But, I'm, okay. just saying, I'm just saying this episode didn't do anything any, any better for her character. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna back David on this because, like, like, every time like we've seen her like, in some sort of fight, she basically just she's there for the etchiness because she just gets beat down, and it always her clothes end up being exactly like the same every time that she gets beat up, where she has like really nothing on, and then because like, both times it's happened both times where she looks oh. exactly the same. You, you guys don't understand the logic. The less uh-huh. clothes, the less clothes you have as a female, the more armor protection you have, All right? right? Oh yes, yes. I'm, I'm sure their powers go up too, just like Kill a Kill. Yeah, yeah, they do actually. You guys oh, are obviously okay. like oh, the most okay. basic, right, right, like, right. Basic yeah. mechanic of female armor. All right, uh-huh, uh-huh. horrible. Um, let's see. Out of the, I don't know, like the like the episode. I agree with David. Like it's it was better, but it still was far from being good. Uh, I hated the back and forth too, uh, between like the guy that had that can like manipulate bullets and then the the, the brother. Oh, They're just having... Uh, they're having this the, conversation yeah. during like, a fight against some guy that like, looks like he should be from Castle Crashers, and, <laughs> and yeah. where so it, it, beat, by the way, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the whole thing was just it was just dumb. I'm like, this is a terrible fucking time to have this this conversation. Yeah. The only part I laughed about, uh, I actually laughed, was when she said like, "Oh, like, uh, like what? What did you mean to, like to do her?" She's like, I mean, "She was the meat shield." He just basically just straight up straight up says it. I, I, I thought that part was pretty funny. Um, but I, but I thought again, like the whole part was just stupid, and, yeah. and I also like hey, they're showing like these white clad people of uh, people we've never seen, 
and they just serve no purpose. And I just and I, I just assume all the main like white clad people we know are just gonna. I'm just gonna say they're gonna get away. I don't think anything's gonna be resolved again. They're just gonna blow up this place and then just call it GG and move on to something else. Uh, uh, no, I'm I'm sure something's going to happen. You think so? Do you think somebody like noteworthy is going to die? I mean, if anything, I think Dr. Giov- Dr. I mean, Giovanni's going to die. Maybe. I mean, I mean uh, yeah, not, pressure, like, point, yeah. Juggernaut yeah. died this episode, but like again, you can't like the chill does bad. Didn't he die though? I mean, uh, pretty sure. I don't know, dude. This is the Shonen stuff. They they covered his body like when you carry him on the stretcher, so I assume he's dead. Did they? Yeah. Oh. Like, they, yeah. I kind of. Okay. Or I'm pretty. Sure, I'm, I, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they covered his face. If they didn't, then they maybe they'll do the excuse that like he's just been knocked out. But I'm pretty sure he's yeah. dead. But either way, like if he did die, like the show didn't do a good job of like conveying that emotion. Just like yeah, yeah. Dude, well, I already like the show. Like I don't know any of the serious moments. I just can't take serious anymore. Just right. because they they changed so fast between like just basically just joking around to like killing somebody off, yeah, just... and it's just like wait. Like, like, and where I, I just, I can't help but laugh just because I just feel like, like, it, like something stupid is going to happen afterwards, and yeah. it ends up being actually like their serious that, moment. That's what happens, like when you, when you like fail the tonal shifts. Like that's why it's hard to do for a lot of shows, and this, this is the result. Like you can't just take, like those serious moments just aren't like impactful. Oh yeah, Fire Force is terrible at it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like this episode is actually the worst one out of the last few episodes really? we've got. Jeez, I. Yeah, disagree I, I with disagree. That, but, I yeah. think this is better. What was really enjoyable about, about the show? Like well, that, that, that's my point. Like, episode. Like, it, it wasn't good. It was far it was from better. it, but it was yeah. better than like the last episodes. Like I was actually uh, like I don't know. Like I actually enjoyed watching this one. <laughs> so just... I, I want to know more about that general guy that headbutts people now. I don't know why. I just want to know more of what he does. I just want more of the fight with like Shinra and Giovanni. That's all I'm just here for. Dude, and Arthur's there now too. Yeah. So that's gonna be so much better. I, mean, I see that that fight. That's the kind of thing I really cared about. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually hyped for that fight now. I mean, other than the setup for like the the Giovanni fight, like this this episode didn't really do anything for me. I mean, you had Tamaki try to show off, but then you know, like you guys mentioned, with the way that Juggernaut and Tamaki was set up. No yeah. one really cares. Like you can't even take that scene seriously. Which, if you yeah. were to try to get rid of everything that's happened before this, like maybe you would have felt something and felt more of an impact. But no one really cares. And then, you know, you had the the captain of the second or whatever just constantly just headbutting people. Like <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't like to me. It wasn't as funny just because we've seen him do it so many times. And then like yeah, the uh, the eighth captain. Uh, he was pretty cool too, but it was nothing spectacular. I think for me, and then the, the whole fight with like the lieutenant and uh, like Maki's brother, that part was so annoying. Like, bad. yeah, that like, I, didn't I just wish you would shut up. And it turns out this, I, we found out the reason why he survived that explosion. Right, this guy can actually create like a like a shield to fend off fire. So maybe that's how he survived that explosion. But yeah. he, he, if he has that ability, how the hell did he get like banged up the way he did? You know. So for me, I think it's just last episode. I just really didn't like it. So it was such a step up from last episode. I think that's where I'm coming from. Like, yeah. I thought the last episode, like, just with like, like the that badass guy just dying right away, and then like, and then them trying yeah, to do, do like the, the, the whatever with Juggernaut. Like, I just thought that part was just so bad that like, that's why I thought this episode was much more refreshing. So. Mm. <laughs> So was, and and then like, the first episode of this arc didn't really do anything either. Like it was just a setup. So yeah, I also don't think Giovanni's gonna die, Ku, just because I think it's space. It's a, it's gonna be that moment where everybody's gonna have to like run out of the place before it blows. I don't think we're gonna get any kind of like resolution of fights. I think everybody's just gonna run. I don't know. If it was just Shinra and Doctor Giovanni, maybe. But when Arthur showed up, I was like, oh yeah, someone's gotta fucking die. You think know, so? Like, mm-hmm. gonna I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. The show is so inconsistent of like who lives and who dies. Yeah, you find honestly, it. can't. Yeah, I, I can't follow it, and I don't really care to follow it anymore. I, I'm like, I, I'm still gonna watch it. Like, it was I think we have like three episodes left. Like, so many people died. Oh, like, so much, so many like fire force and like soldiers or firefighters. Like, they died this episode. Then like that, that maybe seen no, ever, I'm and just like, it just felt yeah. like so. Like, why did you no, why did you do it all here? Like, just to set up the the necromancer chick, but it's like. Yeah, I don't know. Just... Which, by the way, is 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 fucking OP. Why did they not showcase or have this like, uh, this this chick come out earlier, dude? Necromancy, she, that's so I mean, strong. To be fair, like, like you, to be fair, like you need, I guess she needs like you need numbers. Have, you need you need to have the bodies for it, but like, 
it is still, it is still really strong if you do have it. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. You, you can easily just kill people on the street. You know, you're you're a group of villains. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can basically just kill whoever you want on the street and just like reanimate them. Because yeah. as, as as far as we know of, there's really no limitations. You got people who's been dead forever. You got people who just like died recently, and they're all been reanimated like like that. And she has like a huge amount of them too. Like she she's basically like this is her area this is her like domain right like she's so overpowered in this area like there's no way in hell that she should lose realistically literally they can't even find her like she's there somewhere but they don't know where the hell she is right and she's gonna blow the place up and now they're gonna have tokyo crumble which by the way you didn't even need the fire force team to come here you could have if that was your plan you could have done this in season one like she could have easily been the the last boss in season one yeah like well, the whole thing, like when I, th- I thought them just like going into like the the, the nether realm, nether world, whatever, I thought it was just stupid, and it was just kind of like out of nowhere because they they went there once and then just kind of like, ignored it, right. and they all of a sudden are deciding to go back again for some reason. And it's, I don't know, it's just the show is just. I mean, we get we have three episodes left, and then we don't have to talk about Fire Force anymore for a while. Oh, and then the other thing that pissed me off: this whole second special force team, they all have assault rifles, and. <laughs> Only like a select few of them has like pyro powers, but this group is so useless. Yeah, they're, they're basically will like the second company was basically just brought in to all die. It's like oh. that. There's, this episode just had so many things that bugged me that just ticked me off. Like, damn, I, I don't okay. Care. Well, when you said like that, yeah, I, I can see your point. I still, I think it's just because like I still didn't like this last week's episode that like. Just, just a Shinra no, and Shin- Giovanni fight just was enough to bring me back. Yeah. So. It's basically well, like, actually, the I get possibilities that. of next episode, I guess. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Other, other than the setup, you know, that was that was basically it. The only thing that we have that, like, brought enjoyment to this episode was the fact that Arthur and Shinra was teaming yeah, up to fight Giovanni. Yeah. That, that was it. Everything else about this episode sucked. So. It was not good. But I, I still want to know about the head petting general, though. I didn't really find it funny. I just want to know more about him now. I, I guess. Seems a like crazy fast. Seems like just a crazy ass uh, fast cannonball. Seems useless to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, that, that's all I had about this episode. I mean, every week I gotta say, man, if only this author was consistent, he just could have just focus on, I don't know, just just have focus, and you could have had a good series, not a train wreck. So yeah, it was good, and well. Maybe it'll, it'll, I assume it's gonna have, it'll get better just when have like focus get... and be consistent and could have. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it went out good instead of retiring in shame. It'll get, I mean, it'll get better. I assume when it gets to the main cast again, it's just like all the side garbage where it's just like, like what the hell's the point of going to the nether like nether world that like it's like those things like once that shit's clear out of the way, we'll see how it goes after that. Man. Yeah, they, they keep saying nether even though it's the fucking subway system. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, so so that's all we gotta say for Fire Force. And then now we're gonna talk about Tamachi. So now, yes. All right. This is all. This this episode's all yours. You can take it from here. I don't know. I I, I actually thought this episode was really good. Um, one at at the beginning, we basically have to see that spear guy die to the Minotaur, which was. I mean, I mean, we could have saw more and you your favorite was, character, dicks. Yeah, like I kind of wish there was like something more. But holy shit, dude! The, like the strength of this guy, of like this monster, like where he can actually go toe to toes with eyes with one arm. I thought that was pretty epic. <laughs> oh my goodness! Like, I think, uh, like I think they're dropping hints, right? Like Ataro even mentioned, like, hey, isn't that the same guy? Yeah. Like I think it's the like reincarnation of the Minotaur that that he trained to go after Bell. Ah. Fuck, like, I don't know. Now, now that you think yeah. of it, like, dude, like, now it's like, yeah, what, what if something has to do with that? Because if he gets reborn into, like, another Minotaur with, like, kind of like a conscience, right? I don't know. I, I, that like That's a part of the where I, I definitely wanted to know. But, I, I, like, I never wanted, like, I didn't know anything about this Minotaur, but I did not want him to die. I thought, like, when he, when he first lopped the arm, I was like, thinking, fuck, we're going to have to watch. Basically, like, they're going to have, like, all these hints with, with the Otaro, and then they're just going to kill him off. I'm like, fuck, don't do it, please. I was like, I didn't know. And I, which was another kind of like a feeling I was not expecting to get for this show. Yeah, dude, man, so many good moments in this episode. I think it was like a really good finisher to this arc. Yeah, when first like like the like the 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 cover up that Bell went with, I was uh-huh. like, dude, 
Fucking perfect. <laughs> Fucking smart ass <laughs> dude. Like, I, I, like, I completely forgot about that. No, I was thinking, like, dude, how the fuck is Bell going to get out of this, right? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's no way. And then, like, with the last episode, they ended up with him, like, uh, like trembling and, like, unsure what to do. This oh, episode, cool. it just yeah. opened up with him, like, I got it. Perfect play. She, yeah. you know, she, she's my kill. She's my prey. You know, don't touch her. And I was like, oh, shit, you're right. My bad. And yeah. then they, they just left him alone, you know? Yeah. But. Yeah, um, I mean, like, when everybody, like, dropped down, like, from uh from the Loki familiar, I thought, and then it basically just wiped up the, like, the just the main creatures, and then, uh, mm-hmm. when a Minotaur jumps in, does his howl, and basically knocks everybody out, besides, mm-hmm. like, the Loki team, and then, uh, where, like, none of them had a shot, then, you know, of course, and eyes just drops down, it's, like, the final boss, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, and then, uh, just immediately, arm lopped off, and then, like, uh, it was a Minotaur kicked in, but then, um, everything was, all, all that stuff that, that happened, and, um, when, the, when he dropped down, or with like, everybody kind of like, dropped down, and the, the one moment I did not, ex- I, I did not think was going to happen. I did not think you were going to be right, cool. Was when, uh, when was when Vine, like basically when she was like disappearing. I was like, dude, I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I was like, how, like, who called this shit? I was like, because the show has never actually had like those like crazy ass like how like um, what's the term that we use like that uh, the catalyst moment? Yeah, where I, where he maybe had like his own kind of like you know moments in his mind where he just like hypes himself up. He's the hero. He gets that ability. Blah 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 blah. Right. I thought, you know, we never had, like, those kind of moments. But then when she disappeared, I was like, holy fuck. I actually teared up a bit, thinking, like, there's no way in hell this is happening right now. And then, yeah. then yeah. Fels, Fels coming on the clutch. Dude, Fels is fucking insane. Like, like he has, like, or he, uh, you know, we don't know. It. <laughs> yeah. But sure. Basically, the, the mage has, like, basically like, the best healing abilities. Where it's, like, OP, which, at, at the same time, he should have been so much better in the mobile game than what they made him. They made it just like they just made him a terrible yeah. fucking healer. When like, but this guy has like the heal all ability, and then he also has basically like like revive. <laughs> and it actually works. I think yeah. it only works on monsters, I guess, because that's well, why Bell's either, that, that either that or it only worked because of maybe like something with Bell's ability of like being a hero because like those little right. balls of light started like appearing around him. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it's something to have to deal with Bell because like even like even Fowl's mentioned something. He's like, dude. Just be the fool. Who gives a fuck? I thought, damn, dude, Fowl's MVP. Like, no. Fowl's immediately one of my favorite characters. <laughs> yeah, no, and then, like, there's so much that the, I don't know if it's canon or not, but won't like, I, I and I keep talking about the mobile game too. Like but, Argonaut. Yeah, the Argonaut story. Like, it, it, everything is tying so much to that story. Every time they bring up something about it's like, gotta be right. It's cool, right? Be. And that's the, the Argonaut's title, and then like the Minotaur being the strongest like monster. Yeah, that's the Minotaur from uh, the Argonaut tale as well. Like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't I tell really if it's it. really like canon or not, but I'm really hoping that it is because I think yeah. they'll be so cool. I hope they like in since like in some way or some like they have a kind of like the spinoff series like where they made with like, Isaac's story. If right. they actually like like animate like the Argonaut story, because holy sh- David, it would be intense. It would be so. Because dude, Argonaut is a fucking badass. <laughs> the show oh, made bad in the movie instead of the fucking filler that we got. Yeah, dude. It's like, uh, if, if yeah. they did, like, because, uh, like, uh, in the in the mobile game, like, Argonaut and, uh, what was the, uh, what was the other red, what was the guy's name? Um, it Who? wasn't, it, uh, yeah, the, the red-headed guy, like, it wasn't. Krauzo or something? Yeah, Krauzo. Where, yeah, yeah basically, like, it's supposed to be like, his ancestor, like, I don't know, like, if they actually go back to the story with the ancestors, it would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, because it also has Ryu's, uh, Ryu's as well. I don't know. It, like, if if it happens, it that would be. It, I think it'd be really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, it's kind of. I don't know. But this episode had everything. It had like, uh, what's the term, David? You use like the cop out. It had my my favorite cop outs, and it had, it had everything. That's... It had like the feeling. It had like Bell realize like he actually wants to fight for the mo- like you know fight fight for the monsters. Kind of was it the realization like uh, I don't know like Fells basically like just realizing how strong of a mage like like he actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like at first, I thought like when like when we got kind of like the debated is like, is like I'm using it. It's like the golem gets cut in half like in one move. I was like, dude, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, even felt like, damn, dude, these guys are too strong. Yeah, fuck. yeah. And then Hermes had to save him. <laughs> um, oh, man. yeah, I don't know, dude. There's so many moments like just back and forth. I thought I was done really well. I thought like, holy shit, I can't believe like JC staff is pulling this out, uh, pulling this off. Yeah, like the animation between the Minotaur and Ice was actually really oh, good okay. too. Yeah. So yeah. With, with all the shit talk you do about JC staff, I know, like, I know, right? They, they, actually I know, they, they came through when it mattered again, just like in the first season. Uh, like the song that kicked in too, like during that whole like uh, bell moment as well. Like I thought that yeah. song was really good. 
Uh, I'll most likely uh, get that song later on when uh, it becomes available. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, yeah. I, so I don't know. Dude, I just, I don't know. I, I, I actually now wish that this show was, uh, or this season of Damachi was going longer than 12 episodes. I, and I never would have thought, like, I actually would want more of the show. <laughs> I thought after season two, I was done with it. Yeah, hopefully they, they keep going, because I I don't know. Is is the light novel finished? No. I don't think not. so. But yeah, sure. it's still going. Yeah, but so that, that case, they have a lot of material to work with. Like, so. honestly, like, like, honestly, I'd be fine with, like, even if they took a break from the main story and did, like, Argonaut, like, Argonaut story, I, would, I think it would be worth it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Or like reuse backstory too. I think that'll be pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Backstory. Yeah. She has a spinoff in the light novel for her. Yeah, that's why that's another possibility. Oh okay. Yeah. So it's there. So it's possible. But yeah, yeah. Dude, this this is like really good. Like other than that cop on at the end, which by the way, I I didn't mind. I think it was justifiable <laughs> with how they presented it. Yeah. But like this whole episode, I think it was done like extremely well. I would say like perfect. Yeah. They had everything. Yeah, like the Minotaur survived. I hope somehow he can regenerate his other arm because I want this guy to be at full strength. Uh, I'm sure Phil will help him out with that. Yeah, that, and I also want, I definitely want to know like more like the backstory with Otaro, and if he, he's actually the Minotaur back from the Argonaut days. Yeah, I mean it, it would make sense if you're if you're talking about reincarnation, like a monsters in, within a dungeon. Like to me, that would make sense. Yeah, because somehow Otaro knows of this man. <laughs> right. Like, hey, I know. Actually, I know this. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say like if they actually went through with the the Wiene death, I thought she was gonna get reincarnated to another monster, and I thought in the end of the yeah. arc was just Bell finding her. So, right, yeah, it could be something like that too. But dude, it's even better, man. She survived. Fowls is a beast. The Minotaur lived. It, dude. Um, what level do you think the Minotaur is? Because I think with Eyes is level level six. He's got to be level six. He's got to be a, like like either he just hit six or like high level five because like. He was able to like fend off ice, yeah. but I don't know if he would have won that or not because he did get his arm chopped off. But oh, it looked man. like he was still holding it on his own because uh, Finn and Gareth they had to step in uh, to like help out ice. So yeah, I, uh, I think though if he had both arms and he basically wasn't, I, I just assume he was probably caught off guard because he was facing everybody like everybody else that apparently is just such a huge uh, level gap that yeah. he like, it wasn't even like a like even a threat for him. And then all of a sudden, just you know, final boss jumping in and of course just slice like just. Lops the arm clean off, and then you're already at a disadvantage from there. Yeah, but I don't know. It, I don't know. I, I, I just this is definitely like my favorite uh, show of the season for me. I mean, it's up there. <laughs> like for me, it's up there again. Yeah. Never would have thought. Never would have thought this was gonna happen. But so, David, what were the parts that you didn't like of this episode? Oh, just the, the, that's the cop out. That's like that's it. Okay, main, my main criticism. Everything else was good though. Yeah. But dude, fellas, man, coming in for the clutch, your mage, dude, that's you. I just, whatever. <laughs> that is your boy. For me, I just want, whenever like they like they try like to like push death as like as one of the stakes, like I want them to commit. Like we yeah. don't see that enough well, in anime, so I want I, like my thing is like when in I want the consequences for for action. So like if you're gonna make someone die, I want I want the show to commit. That's like my that's main great. thing. But we don't know basically what caused like the like, what, like why Fells' like spell worked this time and not like the other times that he used it like with eight hundred years. I think what did what did he say like eight hundred years he was trying Something to get like this that, yeah. it never worked yeah, yeah. hundred years yeah so I so I actually I want to know one why it worked this time and like what, I mean, what I just, possibly I just... caused it to work but I still think it's because so like, the one with the monster is actually I think I think really really good or like if you need something that remains of them you know because like because she he did still have the stone of. Uh, of uh of Vina. right so either that or if it had to do something with bell just with the hero ability uh-huh. or both so like I, I hope that they actually explain it because i i definitely want to know why yeah like, and why then, it happened like, this time and if you want to like talk about consequences there 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 is consequences right oh they're, they're well, gonna I mean, come I mean, for, through, the, yeah. for the death like i, don't yeah. I mean well well I'm, like i'm sure there's gonna be a like, I, I guess it depends on how it plays I out, mean, but there's going to be a fate worth than death in a sense because we're no, we now have to deal with the repercussions of what Bell did, and yes. you know, like he is. Oh, an no. MC. Well, I mean, I mean, like, like, like for something like revival, like I want, uh-huh. I, I guess I want like then fell. So like, it's basically like you know, like equivalent exchange. Like if you're gonna revive someone, you have to like kill, it, like sacrifice yourself. Then, so it doesn't look like that's gonna yeah. happen either. So well, to be fair though, like this this spell apparently is like what like uh, knowledge above like. Uh... Well, it's basically it sounds like it's basically like a god level spell yeah but yeah. i know but i'm just saying like that's why it feels like a cop I mean, out it's 
No, well, it felt like also it was... the problem with that too is you know he is a I don't know if he's a god or not, but you know he is a sage that has sage. immortality. Yeah, Dude, sages so, are supposed to be like insane too. Right, it's not it's not some kind of like BS skill that he just pulled out of his ass, right? Yeah. It's actually something that he's developed for a long time, so it's actually yeah. understandable that he's able to do something like this. In a sense, like kind of like in the spell where he basically says like you know what what's been paid before because like you know he doesn't have flesh or any or anything. He it's right. just skeletons. So right. I mean, he basically like I would assume like he he probably did something because of possible forbidden magic, or mm -hmm. whatever at that level. That basically I mean, that's, just that's what I mean. Like, like, I, I, I want to see more of the consequences of using the yeah. forbidden magic. It seems like otherwise it seems like reviving is yeah. Like either that either that or we have to just know like why it works this time or like basically I I want to, I want to know more before I just call it a cop out. <laughs> I think like, next episode is going to tell us for sure. Like it's I gonna actually hope so. Yeah. Yeah, because based on the the title, of the next next week's episode, it looks like it's it's going to be like the like the detailed rep repercussions of everyone's actions. So yeah, yeah, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with the knowledge dump. I want to know like, actually what I want to know like the world building, basically what happens. Right. So we'll, we, so I I'm I'm very happy for next episode. But anyway. <laughs> that's all i really i think i really got yeah, carried, i think we covered everything he carried this for me strand so i'm good yeah i mean yeah, i think me and cool were actually like I, I texted him immediately after the episode i was like dude this episode bro. dude when you texted me i just finished and i was dude, like oh, oh my dude. god dude and yeah, this fucking episode dude, Trin, yeah, yeah be careful with that man you don't know when people are watching these shows no, all i said okay hold on I'll, 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 I'll tell you what i said this is the only thing i said to cool i said bro damachi that's all I said. Still, I mean, that's still. That usually means something good's going to happen or something amazing's going to happen. That's still like that's still hinting like something important to happen in the episode. I mean, I mean, okay, guys, I'll back off. No, I mean, uh, like, like I said, I'm I'm fine with it, but yeah, you you well, do I, have to be careful I because that I always I always just kind of gauge because I always assume like if because uh because uh, I mean because like if, what I do basically right when I get off work I immediately watch the shows. Yeah. So I just assume like you know like uh because like me and Koo both have enough episodes that come out on Fridays that we basically have to start immediately when we get yeah. off of work. Yeah. So I, I just assumed I was like, dude, like it, with Damachi, I was like, it's gotta be one of the first ones he watches for the day, right? So I, uh, I mean, so I there's just... there's plenty of shows where like where it's he, it seems like nothing is happening until you get like that one plot twist or whatever. So I'll I'm wait. Just, I'm God, I'll wait. Gotta be careful. I'll wait. I'll wait. But yeah, like I said, it's fine. But yeah, you do gotta be careful. But yeah, man, but like I said, what, I finished watching it and I got that text. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this this show. We have to talk about it. It's Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I, I thought it was actually like everything was just it was just so well done. Yeah, oh, pacing man. pacing is going I think just fine. It, it really helps when they just focus on one arc instead of five for twelve episodes. Yep. So I mm -hmm. definitely think it helps out. Even JC staff can pull it out. <laughs> so props to them. It's too bad. Yeah, <sighs> sure. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll see if your if your thoughts change next episode, David. No, no, no. When you're saying JC stuff, it's like, man, oh. you have to do save all this for Damachi, not One Punch Man. Yeah, Dude, I well, we weren't doing the stream though, or we weren't doing the podcast no, stream. Yeah, I'm saying like like more. Oh, dude, fuck. ruin it completely. One Punch Man is more popular, so like this should have been like they should oh, have dude. done it there to save the reputation. Yeah, I mean, if we had, <laughs> if we were doing this podcast during the time One Punch Man, no, like, I'm saying, I'm saying for us, I'm saying for them, like, oh, I'm saying for us too. <sighs> like, you, you, like, if you thought I was, like, I was hammering, like, you know, JC staff for other shit. Holy fuck, dude, do they? Never mind. They yeah. Completely tore apart that's and just ruined that's One Punch Man. For the future. Yeah. So, like, I have no interest in reading it. But anyway, so, that's it for Tamachi. <laughs> okay. All right. And then next up, um, I'll leave it to you, Do you want to talk about Standing a Million Lives? Or do you want to talk about Ikipukuro West Park? Westgate. We could do we could do both because both of them was actually pretty good this yeah, week. Yeah, okay, do which, which one do you want to start off with? I mean, do Westgate first because I gotta run another rush. Okay. <laughs> yes, we do Ikiburo. All okay, right, so Ikiburo was Westgate. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, this it looks like this arc was closed off early. It was a two parter episode. Um, I got I got my game wards in a sense, but not really. Everything was solved peacefully, and there was really no. I guess there was a consequence. Knight got his his leg messed up, but um, that was it. Like everything Knight deserved it. Yeah, but there was no real consequences other than that, you know. I was yeah. Bloodshed or, or some kind of like brawl, but nope, that's it. Yeah, I'm excited for this to be over. This arc. <laughs> it's already I mean, over. I mean, what do we? 
I, I thought this was going to last the next six episodes or until it ends, you know? No, I didn't think so. And also, that fight, like, what do you even want? Like, what sort of fighting did you want? Did you see that fighting in the porn section of the video store? That fighting was so weak. Like, it was almost embarrassing to watch. <laughs> exactly, because they did it in an enclosed area that had porn everywhere. So they were obviously <laughs> distracted, right? I oh was distracted. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyways but actually i will give you that i was like trying to look at those covers and i was like wait are they gonna show anything What's on me? i knew it i knew it but, but no that it's is not my point <laughs> right right sure okay uh but yeah no it's like with what if you're gonna show me something op at least has something similar to it right i mean yeah. i mean i'm sure like I guess the last episode or something, maybe the Red Angels and the G Boys will like duke it out. But yeah, everything will just like resolve so peacefully. I was kind of expecting more chaos, right? Um, well, um, I don't really know what I was hoping for or what I was thinking would happen. I will give you that I thought that this was going to last longer than two episodes. But to be honest, I think it still will last more than two episodes. Like, I think this specific part, like, this, this, whole, the whole ball on this one got rolling because, because of Night, right? Who originally um, hired Shadow? Why did I already forget? Who was it? Oh, it was apparently the Mars, uh, the, the Mars group, and then the five guys that they, that were they the beat up episode. in, like, yeah, the first yeah. two episodes or whatever, which were okay. a bunch of nobodies, by the way. So I'm not even sure why they even came back into the story. But yeah, right. I know. I was really confused by that too because they seem so creepy with their animal masks and following Makoto in the in the <laughs> in the alley. And I was like, oh, it's just these freaking guys, this pink haired, like ninety pound punk. <laughs> like, right. You know, it's like, who, like, who are you people? You guys are a bunch of nobodies. And then they brought out the Mars like corporation. I have no idea who they are or how important they were. So that was kind of weird as well. That was uh, weird. And then like Shadow, the, the legendary assassin, or the guy who has like a super like like reputable like uh, I guess job profile or portfolio. Reputable yeah. reputation. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I'm the best. Your reputation is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you can clearly see that he has skills and he knows what he's doing. But then he becomes like best friends with Makoto and then uh Takashi. So it's like what 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 just happened? Why why is everyone being all buddy buddy now? Yeah, well, okay, so so that, that kind of like lends to what I was going to say earlier, which is that I think this was the first element of clashing, but I think that it's there's going to be a more encompassed one later on. Like, this was basically just like Randall's wanting to start a war, but I feel like there's still going to be something that happens between the games themselves that happens a little bit more organically. Um, but then again, I don't know, we've only got four like episodes what? left? Yeah, I think, I think so. Like four or five, maybe, at most. So, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you're the one that wants Gang Wars. I liked more of the type of episodes that we have before, so... I would <laughs> promise something, alright? I would take it, <clears throat> I would take a guess that you guys probably would have five episodes left, because I think when I do the, the timestamps, it's one episode be behind like everything else. So, hey. I think most shows have like four, so it should have five. Hey, Stratton, <laughs> since you hopped in, you should tell Ku what you thought the show was about. Nah, we don't need to do that. <laughs> what? But what was it? Okay, for some reason, not knowing anything about the show, uh -huh. I heard Ikebukuro Westgate Park. For some reason, I got eight, I got eight mile vibes, and I thought I was about rappers. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't see, they haven't stay muted. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's what I thought about the show. Cause I had no fucking clue. Like, cause I, I for some reason, like, cause Ku kept wanting, like, like he kept, he's like, oh, he kept wanting wars, kept wanting wars. I was like, why? I was like, aren't these guys like musicians? What? <laughs> what the game was was in Eight Mile? No, man. I I never saw Eight Mile or Eight Mile, but for some reason, I got the vibes of it. You know, I just thought of you know. Which, I, also, I don't know. Which by the way, there, there is a there is like anime this season. Hip, hip knock, what is it? Hypnosis Mike, which is like, yeah, rap and, yeah, that might be why. see, I remember David saying something about that. I just assume it was Westgate. <laughs> so. I don't know, dude. Ah, fucking good. It's <laughs> friend. You it's enjoyed the, the Hachiman rap battle so much. You want to see more of it? I don't know, dude. Apparently, it haunts <laughs> my dreams. I don't know. I could understand. Yes, I would get behind that. We need more of that in our lives. No, I was the only one who didn't like that. Everybody else loved it. God. I, I don't even know what to say to that. 
but you know it's, a, it's okay, man. You don't have to say anything. I'm not. <laughs> your 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 facial expressions, your your facial expressions, and David's reaction, but it's it's it spoke volumes. Which okay. again, I, I just I just want again what I want to say about EK Pro Pro. It's just a suburb of Tokyo where college students live. All right, it's not this sketchy My place. Bad. My bad. No, I'm talking about this the show like when trying to describe like EK oh, Pro right, right, like some. Yeah. Like I, all, I, the, I the, the game war stuff happens in like Shinjuku in like Red Light District, not EK Brook Row. That's like, right. I have to bring IRL into this. I wish that this show had some more elements. Like I wish there was an episode or two that like delved into how Takashi and Makoto met each other. Like why are they affiliated with each other? Why does mm-hmm. Makoto's mom seem totally cool with him being friends with like all gang members mm-hmm. if he's not a member himself? Like I just feel like there's a lot of um, background story to these characters that literally we know nothing about. We we know basically nothing about them. Like we know like the basic like top three like um, personality traits of them maybe for for Makoto, but Takashi, I know nothing about him. He just like wanders around and mutters. That's all he does. Mm-hmm. As far as I can tell, he's supposed to be the leader of this gang, and he leaves no impression on me whatsoever. And I feel like those things if they had episodes about that could lead into something that's interesting with gang wars. But because we don't have any of that history, I have no interest in gang wars because I have no interest in the, these characters. Whereas like the, the week by week episodes they've had, they've introduced. I actually storylines I think are pretty decent. You know what I mean? Like not really something I've seen in a whole lot of other anime. I mean, you guys watch way more than me, but um, like it's something that was more unique to me. And I thought they did well. So, so gang wars, I feel like, would just fall flat, unless you're just looking for the fighting. <laughs> no, I mean it was just the fact that I was promised something, right? Those, there's, like, from episode one, you can tell that tension was built up, the story was going somewhere, and then after episode two through six, it kind of just fell flat, where it was just basically mm-hmm. a show about nothing, just a bunch of random cases that Makoto happens to have like stumbled, on, like stumbled into. And then with this one, it looked like they're finally going to like go back to the roots, right? And then again yeah. with OP, if you're going to show me, you know, something, I expect the show to like be somewhat consistent with that because it yeah. gives you like this expect- expectation of what the show is going to be like. Did uh, you ever see Death Parade too? Yep. Okay, I was just curious because that opening didn't match that show at all. No, like like it, it didn't, <laughs> but I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, I um. I I get your point. I understand what you're saying. But I'm I, I mean I liked the episodes before. This one was I mean, it, it didn't really do anything for me. Um but well I don't know. It's it'll be kind of interesting to see where it goes from here. If they do end up having more more gang wars somehow bringing that up or if it's just gonna finish off with like four episodes of random plot and then be done. I'm curious to see. Or rap yeah. battles. Or rap battles, but I mean, if anything, I feel like it's just gonna do. I'll, I'll probably have like one or two more random cases, and then mm-hmm. the last few episodes will just be like the backstory is how Makoto and Takeshi met, or why he's yeah. a leader, and then yeah. it's just gonna be one of those endings where it's like, like what, what the fuck did I just watch? Like, what was, what was the point of the show? What was you the know? point? Yeah. Right. So I think we probably will end up feeling that way at the end. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I mean, like I said, it's still enjoyable. It was just mm-hmm. weird, but yeah. I just want to mention too that that this, this is based on a novel, so it's probably gonna be different yeah. than like what 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 you used to with, with other animes. Well, oh, I don't know. I mean, I've read some stuff about the people who had read the novels, and it actually sounds like it matches up with the novels pretty well because what what Ku and I are talking about kind of matches some of the criticisms for the novels too. Yeah, so I'm just saying oh, okay. like like you're saying like how comparing to other animes, but like. It's hard. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's different. It's a different style than what we're used to because it's based on novels instead of mangas or like novels. Sure, that's fair. That makes sense. Hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. I guess that's a it then for Ikipuko Rescate. <laughs> now, starting you can jump in with staying on million lives. Woohoo! Oh man. So <laughs> we have uh, inspirations here from real life. Uh, we have uh, Fallout and uh, what was the other one? I mean, what are you talking about? Like the main character, he had inspirations of how to be like an evil villain from Fallout and another game. Oh, I only I only caught Fallout. I didn't know the other one. Oh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Oh, series. was it Dark Souls? Yeah. 
Yeah. Wait, so, what's happening here? Can you explain that more? They're they're being inspired by video games. Yeah. So, uh, like after the the party made it out of the the, the booby trap or whatever, they decided to split off into two groups. One group was going to chase after the uh like the 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 night squad that like trapped them in, and then the other group was going to go towards the town that they were supposed to head off to to kind of complete their objective. And then um, the main character, uh, Yusuke, uh, he was part of the group that was chasing after the knights. And then he wanted to get revenge on them and do it in a way where it wouldn't cause a war between the two countries where um, uh, the female knights from. And mm -hmm. so when he came up with this evil plan, they're like, man, how are you so good at this? Like, are you His sure plan you're not... was really good, actually. Yeah, like, are you sure you're not meant to be like an evil lord? And he says, well, I draw my inspirations from games such as Fallout or Dark Souls. Yeah, Fallout was the one I saw. I must have missed the other one. Yeah. And then, yeah, his his plan was actually really good too. He was able to like get away with with everything and not cause a war. So, so far, um, yeah. But the so problem, the, but the problem is like like they didn't actually say mission accomplished or anything. Like you know, nothing actually happened. That like they're still going. There was even a part of me that thought like you know what if like the three people that they were supposed to do were the like the three other people, like mm -hmm. that uh they you know currently you know fleeing even though he burned one of them alive. Yeah. Um. So what if it's if it's actually them and not the other three people that they just they uh like he currently saved, right? No, that's, that's he took a, he took a two level hit too. <laughs> yeah, so, that, that was pretty drastic, dude. At the same time, though, I mean that, that I think that that's the correct move because like like because it's like the workarounds is they seem so much harder in this game or not game but world I guess right to do it it's it's like you might as well just do this. Mm -hmm. And just at least, like, oh, at this time, like, he thought, like, in his mind, like, you know, this is going to clear the mission, even though they're still going. Right. Because it, it was because it was a level hit to him, right? It wasn't to her. Yep, just him. He went from level right. nine to level seven. Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. But no, it's uh, like his, his character is actually pretty interesting, too, because uh, he's not really like a buddy, buddy, like, like goodwill guy. I would say he's. Well, he has some evil shit. <laughs> So, well, like, what would you call that in D and D? Like chaotic good? Uh, um, like the uh, God, what the hell's the term? Like, like what Vegeta was at the time, like Vegeta or uh, antihero, almost. Uh, he, he gets like antihero vibes. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, with the like, I didn't really get his um, uh, what was it? What's the word? Like his analogy that like the relationship that he has with the other three girls. Was that of a bus uh, about to fall <laughs> off a cliff? And then they're just like the four people in that bus. He's just doing whatever he can to survive. Yeah, dude, his analogy was so good. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, dude, what does that even mean? Like, I had to think about it for a second, right? It's like, it oh, makes perfect sense. Yeah. This guy yeah. does not give a fuck. He just wants to survive. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So he's just yeah. doing whatever he has to. Which, and even if he has to like PK someone and then take a hit to his level, as long as he survives, that's all that he cares yeah. about. Like, so like I, the analogy yeah. was so good, but at the same time, it's like, damn, dude, that does not help you with the relationship with your party members. It doesn't, but he doesn't care, dude. <laughs> he just wants to survive, man. And yeah. I get that. Yeah. He's realistic in a sense. It, so. Yeah, like this is like this is the surprise show of the season for me, where I mean, like, where there's so many like isekais, we hate on so many isekais, but like just like the story, like just like I don't know, like just aspects of this. I'm so I'm, I am just so into it. Mm -hmm. And like this this uh MC is so much better than a lot of other uh, isekais we talk about. Oh yeah, for sure. He's a lot different. Yeah, a yeah. lot more different. And it's I want to say maybe it's just because it's more refreshing. Because I don't think we've ever yeah. had a, a anti hero uh no, guy, right? I, don't, I don't believe so, no. Yeah. At least none of the ones I've watched. Right. So yeah, it's, it's I mean, surprisingly pretty good. Yeah. I mean, normally this should be like the closing of the arc too, because it should be mission accomplished. But right. the episode did not have that. Well, so, it's, it's still just part one of the mission, so we have to. I think the next episode is going to be the other group. So we'll oh, have wait, to, they may still have, they may still have to deliver them, right? No, no, they do. They still have to make it to that town, and they still have to deliver like you know the goods to yeah. whatever. So because because they, they basically because like if they reach the town, that should be that should cover what five percent of the map, right? Uh, yep, something like that. Yeah. So okay, so there are a bunch of things. Okay, that makes sense then. Okay. And I like too how like every choice that they make matters because it's not a different world that they hop back into. It's the same world, but just fast forward like a certain period of time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything's done fairly well. And then it's it's really weird because at the beginning, the MC or that group, they didn't seem to like know what they're doing. Like they would they seem to be kind of like lost causes. Oh, yeah. But like the MC, he seems to be like evolving and adapting fairly well. 
Yeah. Uh, and at a fairly decent pace. So yeah, well well that and also the missions, they basically said like, you know, secure three people or three like was it three packages or something like that? Something where like. it was just like they didn't actually know. And then they were was it they were driving by something and they just happened to see like that thing that was going on, on the side. Yeah. And they thought that it was a side quest, and then they're mm. thinking like, "Oh shit, it's actually it could be the main quest." And then they realize, oh, "Wait, the, like mm. the quest didn't actually specify what three things." So mm. they basically thought like it could be like any three things, which is beneficial for them, right? Because like I remember they even, but then they they have like the party member where she's just like, "Oh no, I I gotta save all the kids," and it can't be uh, <clears throat> and then where like basically because I think the main the MC wanted to just abandon the mission, like I oh, will mm. we'll save some three other random things. And she's like, no, I need, I need to save the kid. Right. So it had, it had that part as well. But it's, I don't, it's, I don't know, it's like definitely, like, like I said, the surprise uh, show, especially a sick high mm-hmm. of the season for me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll see. What, there was another part I was wanting to mention. I don't really remember though, uh, what it was. Uh, but it, I mean, if, if I think of it, I'll mention it. But <laughs> I don't, I don't really remember. Right. Okay. Um, well, to, to be fair, there's really not much else to talk about. Um, we've come to terms that, um, uh, like the MC knows how to like how the world works now. So yeah. he's just gonna do whatever he can to survive and get through it. Um, um, uh, the four eyed chick, fairly useless. Um, yeah, she's she has not leveled up or she hasn't like got her like a uh, second class. Yeah, her second class yet. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it, though. Dude, what's crazy? What's crazy is like he has. Oh wait, no. You, you said basically when they rank up, then they basically start at level zero again in that rank or something. Or, or level one, yeah. Level one, okay. Yeah, that's because I was gonna say I was like, I was like, damn, dude, like the MC has like three job changes and he's only level seven now. But mm-hmm. then it makes sense. And if he was only level nine when he was in his chef. Oh, the wizard creature. Yeah. Wait, was he in his wizard form? He wasn't, but then that was the latest job he had, the, the creature wizard form. Oh, so that's the one that takes the hit. Uh, I think so. Hmm. Because it wouldn't make sense because the chef was already had to have been level 10 already, and his farm wear job had, had to have been. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. that would make sense. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. No. Damn. I, mean, I can't I can't remember what the other thing I was gonna say, but if I for some reason think of it, I'll interrupt. Well, next, it's pretty much second. the end of the podcast, so you might want to hurry up and remember. We have Moriarty. Yaku. Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh shit. She's angry, guys. <coughs> All right, so hey, but, I uh, really like Moriarty, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on to Mor- Moriarty and then I'll save it for the end if I remember it and I'll type it down. Okay. okay. All right, so, yeah. But anyway, Moriarty. it's good, man. Yeah, the show is surprisingly good. Uh, So this week on Moriarty, the characters all entered the Titanic, but it wasn't called the Titanic. It was basically called Noah's Ark. But the entire interior design of the ship looks like the Titanic. So that's what I'm going to call it. And they are basically starting their plan of taking down the nobles. And it sounds like... Or I should say they're going to take down the class system. Um, not the nobles specifically, but, you know. And um, it, it's still kind of unclear to me how they're planning on doing that. Uh, I'm not really sure. Something about setting up some sort of a stage and performing a play for all of London. Doesn't matter. I'll let you know when, once once we actually <laughs> learn like the full details. But we finally met uh Sherlock um yeah, Sherlock on the ship. And he had a pretty good entrance too. I really um I was really impressed with his with his entrance. And um trying to think if there's anything else super noteworthy for the episode. It was just kind of setting up what's obviously gonna be like a two or three episode arc. Um so is this the finale yeah, of that... the battle between Moriarty and Sherlock? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, because like basically the way that they met each other was, um, uh, Moriarty was passing by on the ship, and Sherlock was being fawned over by a bunch of these women who were really impressed because he can tell what profession somebody is just by like watching them for a couple seconds, Ooh. and so. And so, and it sounded kind of dumb, but actually, like, once he went into the analysis of it, it was actually pretty good. Um, and I, yeah, I was actually impressed. I thought it was, it was, he seems like he'll be an interesting character. And I can kind of see now why they might end up being nemeses. Like, I'm not really sure about what any of the history of the act, 
the actual Sherlock or any of the any any of the stuff that's ever come from Sherlock. I really don't know anything. I just know the character's name, so I have no idea if this matches up with previous tropes or not. But I can kind of see like why they might end up enemies here because it seems like he is kind of like an L type where he just wants to, where he's just like super smart and just wants to take down anything that is technically against the law. Um, even if it's not necessarily evil, whereas Moriarty is obviously willing to break the law to bring down the class system. So I'll, I'll be kind of interested to see. Um, I, I, again, I don't know if anybody would like this show that has already liked other Sherlock things. It might just be a lot of rinse and repeat stuff. But I mean, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so interested in the show. I'll, I really want to catch up, like, probably end of the season or something. Okay, yeah, I would recommend it. I mean, honestly, like, I don't really ha- personally I don't have that many shows this season so it's fairly high on my list for me <laughs> but that's just because of lack of other stuff that I'm interested in so. okay you guys have you guys have a uh, uh, Tech on Titan in the what like two weeks holy shit maybe two and a half weeks something close with December 7th yeah yep. was it really two weeks oh shit yeah really close I would say yeah. two and a half probably but that's yes. all I got uh, all right I gotta so. start binge watching soon he should. Right, oh, oh, and I have one more thing, actually. Sorry, David. I, I was looking at the opening song for Moriarty because I actually really like the opening. I don't know why. And it turns out that the opening is performed by the same guy who's a voice a- actor for Denki in Hero Academy. Okay. <laughs> Which I just thought that was weird. weird. I had no but... idea. Yeah. Right? I'll, I'll look it up. Back checking me. No, I just want to. No, I, I'm looking at the song. I don't care. I don't care who sings it. I want to hear the song. No, he's fact checking you. The hell, no, I don't care about that. He's uh, he's uh, put the label on your tweet saying this is misleading. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm basically flag everything like <laughs> Trump tweets. And then we'll then we'll we'll have Unravel playing in the background. Why that song? I don't, it's a meme. Why is it that one? I don't know. It's just oh, a meme, meme right together. now. Like you just play it whenever someone is sad or something fails. I don't know. All right. Well, that's gonna be yeah. it for this week's episode. Wait, wait. No, uh, I remember the one. Right? I remember the one. I remember the one thing. <laughs> yes. Right. From uh, from uh, standing on a million lives, cool. All right. So you know how they they always mention like how like oh we're the heroes we can never die. This uh-huh. episode kind of mentioned like actually like, how it can work against them because I, I never even thought about it because like, basically like that one chick where they they like they they're just like we're just gonna tie you to some weights and throw you in the ocean. I was like holy shit, that's a terrible. That's actually like. That's probably worse than death, because you know where she basically would just drown, then revive and just drown again, and then just keep basically just you know in that just unlimited loop. Oh no, they wouldn't revive at all. Uh, they actually went over this in episode one or two when uh, the blonde hair chick was bitten off, like the top half was bitten off, and she was actually stuck in the stomach of the of the guy. So, oh, but she was dead though. Yep, yeah, but she was just constantly. Oh, dead. She okay, never mind. Gone. Yeah. Okay. Well, but 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 okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because I first thought like was... what's up? I was just gonna say if you want that kind of torture, that wasn't in our diaries, that exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't want that. Uh but, but apparently though, I I just don't remember the episode one because I just assume like because when they first mentioned them where they're like, no, I'm just gonna tie you to some weights, throw you in the ocean, and then basically, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know uh, go in for the, it. In the shell when you die, you don't get revived until like you it's like four, yeah. It's like every forty seconds. So I just assumed it oh, was you still, just. You still have to um. What was it? Could you have to meet the conditions, get revived. Yeah, you had to be revived in a state as to where you wouldn't die again instantly. Oh, so, okay. All right. No, well, never mind then. Yeah. So she would just then hang out then with her dead body until. Yep. She somehow got. She'll be a ghost. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> All right. So now we're at the end ending of the podcast. I want to thank everyone for watching. Thanks to the audience. Thanks, chat. <laughs> Thanks, thanks to uh, thank the panel for joining me this week. Thanks, guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. no problem. Every week, man. Every week, yep. Uh, don't have much to say, so just, we'll just end it here. <laughs> we'll see you next week. We'll, or, yeah, we'll, we'll probably be here next week for Black Friday at, at night. So Yeah, yeah, it'll be most likely Friday. Possibly, maybe late maybe. for the day. Probably, we'll see. But I work we'll Friday, see. so I won't be able to get on until night. So. Yeah, but you can always, you know, download our podcast as well. Yeah, so that's or it. watch the VOD on YouTube. Yes, so Whichever. that's it for us this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.